My name's Kevin Steed. Subscribe to Hill Steven on YouTube.com or I'll come to your house and ruin your life. This will be your TNA Destination X 2013 review. Overall, it's an okay show. It's off with Bully Ray. He gets in the ring. He gets on the mic. And he pretty much talks about the thing that he was saying last week, how Chris Saban does not stand the chance in beating Bully Ray for the world title. He then goes on and says that the Ace and Eights will take out the main event mafia tonight. And how he ends up calling out Brooke Hogan. And Brooke Hogan comes out to the ring. And she pretty much tells Bully Ray that he needs to move on, that it's over with, that he needs to accept it. And Bully Ray gets upset. He says, you know what, Brooke? You only move on until I tell you to move on. I'm your husband, and I've said. Hogan comes out, and the crowd goes wild for Hulk Hogan, obviously. And Hogan says, you know what? I'm sick of this. It's over with. And then Bully Ray goes off and says, I'm never going to divorce Brooke, whether you like it or not. And then on a big screen, you see Kurt Angle's face appear with the main event mafia. And they pretty much inform Bully Ray that tonight, the main event mafia will make sure that the Ace and Ace do not interfere in the main event match between Bully Ray and Chris Saban. We get the first match of the night. Austin Aries versus Bobby Roode. The rematch from last year's Destination X. A very okay match. Probably the best match of the night in my opinion. A lot of back and forth action here. A lot of near falls. A lot of high impact spots. It could have gone either way. The crowd was so into this match as well. And ended up with Austin Aries beating Bobby Roode with the Brain Buster for the 1-2-3. And your winner... Being Austin Aries. And then we get into the second match. is a triple threat match. What they're doing is. They're going to have three triple threat matches. And the winner of each one. They will go on to next week's Ultimate X match. And the winner of the Ultimate X match. Will become the new X Division champion. We had the first match. It was P.D. Williams. Versus Sanjay Dutt. Versus Homicide. An okay match. To me the only problem with this. It felt rushed. As in, they didn't let everyone get to their full potential. Sanjay Dutt ended up winning. But nonetheless, it was a whatever match. The crowd really wasn't into it. But whatever. And then we get to the second triple threat match. We had Manic, a.k.a. Suicide, versus Kenny King, versus Chavo Barrero as well. Some good spots here. A lot of back and forth here as well. Manic was obviously the star of this match. In the process, ended up winning. So, Manic advances to the next round. But nonetheless, an okay match. The crowd was semi into it. And then we get to the third and final triple threat match. We had Rockstar Spud versus Rubix, a.k.a. Jigsaw, versus Trent. There was also an okay match. Felt rushed to me. But nonetheless, you know, ended up with Trent pinning Rockstar Spud. So, Trent goes on to the next round as well. So, next week, you'll have Trent versus... Sanjay Dutt versus Manic, and the winner becomes the next X Division champion. After this, we get this whole segment with the main event mafia, and they're in the ring. They're calling out the Ace Saints for this fight. And then the big screen, you see Anderson's face, and he pretty much tells the main event mafia to come to the back to fight. And the main event mafia, they go into the backstage area. They see Anderson. Anderson leads him into a good closet storage area. And the Ace Saints come out, and they attack the main event mafia. They put Kurt Angle in the back of a pickup truck, and they lock the rest of the main event mafia inside his closet, whatever. Kind of cheesy and corny, but nonetheless, it is what it is. And we get to this Mickey James segment. Kind of boring. She pretty much talked about her concert from last week. I think it was in Nashville. How she pretty much was the main figure of that of that show last week. Gail Kim comes out, and she pretty much tells Mickey James that no one cares about her performance, and that next week she will beat. Mickey James for the knockouts title. Then they get into some sort of scramble in, in the middle of the ring and kind of corny and cheesy, but whatever. Don't really care about that, in my opinion. And then we get to the main event Bully Ray versus Chris Sabin for the world title. An okay match. It pretty much was Bully Ray dominating this match, working on Chris Sabin's knees. And pretty much it seemed like Bully Ray was going to win. The main event mafia and Ace and Eights are both on ringside, you know, trying to make sure this match goes the right way, if you get what I mean. And it ends up with Chris Saban drop kicking Bully Ray in the process of hitting the referee. You have Anderson hand over Bully Ray a hammer, which led to a, a huge brawl in the ring between the main event mafia and Ace and Eights. They pretty much go into the back, and you see Saban holding the hammer. But Bully Ray's about to powerbomb. Saban's in the air, about to get powerbombed. He hits Bully Ray with, in the head with the hammer and covers him for the one to bring your winner and new TNA World Champion, 
Chris Saban. Here's my thing with this. I mean, he's been there for such a long time. It's cool that he has the belt, but I don't think he's going to have it for such a long time. I won't be surprised if next week they have him drop the belt to Bully Ray. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about the show. Overall, an okay show. You know, it could have been better. I personally felt what they should have had it was have the Ultimate X match tonight to make it more symbolic because Destination X, and you can have you cannot have a Destination X pay per view or a show, or whatever, without an Ultimate X match. Just my opinion. That's all I'm gonna say. Until next time, I'll catch you later. Peace.